Hey, hello everybody. How are you doing? Fine. Welcome How back. Welcome back to another episode of Max on Color. And my name is Max, and I'm here today with Dr. Sassi. Hello, Dr. Sassi. Hi, Max. How are you doing, Dr. Sassi? I'm fine. It's warm outside. Yeah. I have lots to do, nice projects, and yeah, looking forward to the show. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, um, um, I'm really happy that um, I just come back from FMX last week. Um, let, let me share a little story. Um, I, I w I'm just back from FMX last w uh, yesterday, I guess. Yes, yesterday. And it was really nice um, animations and VFX um, event with um, a lot of VFX uh, community. And um, do you know what? Um, a lot of uh, topics was around, uh, was, you know, was around color management and ACES was got a lot of mentions. And that's, that's actually something that really makes me happy because, you know, if the people at VFX community and, and um, animations start using, let not start, you know, more often using ACES framework, it will be like the best uh, possible scenario, scenario for all of us when um, collaborating. But yeah, enough about ACES <laughs> for today. Um, today, actually, we are joined by our lovely friend, um, that is Diego Yama, and please welcome Diego. Hey, Max. Yes, Diego. Hey, That's Diego, it. how are you, man? I'm great. I'm actually right now in Spain. Ah. I was last week at the NAB, so I have to fly from Vegas to Spain. Oh, My wow. jet lag, right now I'm really bit a big jet lag. So <laughs> I'm waking up like at 1 p.m. and I'm falling asleep like at 4 a.m. Yeah. It's crazy. And the reason you see it's so dark my place here oh. is because I'm actually in a grading room. Nice. You're well prepared. <laughs> So that's the reason. Don't expect that's... a camera in a grading. <laughs> that's actually that's actually a um, good lead in into our topic because today we are going to live grade and um, a project that Diego have, and it is a small documentary project about um, about a street painter, right, Diego? Do you want to talk a little bit about the project, Diego? Right. So so actually, this is like a, let's 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 say that it's a hobby project. Yes. So a friend of us, Tony, Tony Barry, that he also like collaborated with Maxon, he said to me, hey, I want to go to Colombia. And I said to him, perfect, come on, come here, come to my place. That, that is awesome. And then he said to me, hey, but let's do something. Let's record something about your country. So based on that idea, we start talking with some companies, with Blackmagic Design, with Sigma, and they gave us camera lenses, uh, when we had it, we say, okay, now we, we need to record something. Wow. And you know, in Colombia, we have different weathers, different cities. Uh, he came to Bogota where I live, but I say Bogota is the capital city. It's a cold city, it's a mountain city. Let's go to where Colombia is in some way. When you yeah. see more colors, when you see more happiness. And uh, we went to Cartagena. Cartagena nice. is a beautiful city in the coast, really tourist city. And it's, it's a really, the weather over there is hot all it over is, the year. It is the, the city behind the wall, right? Uh, uh, yes. Like surrounded by walls. Okay. Yeah. It's nice. our most touristic city. And over there we, stay, we were start searching like for the stories of where to record and so on. Um, we found a tour guide. Uh, we asked him, hey, can you, can you show us a little bit about what you do and so on? And that was what we recorded. We didn't have any plan. We didn't have any script. We that's, just like interviewing, really cool. recording some things. And that's the, that's the story, that's the project. The good thing about the project is that it's a lovely project. You will see the clip later. And the great thing is that right now I'm in Spain and my students here edit the clip. And my students in two weeks are also going to grade the same clip. Nice. So let's talk that this is a training project from the beginning to the end. Awesome. That is amazing. And um, speaking of that, just to make things fun, um, I would like to invite everybody who's watching this program to go download the project. It will It is available um, in the Dropbox links. So if you go to the YouTube um, page, um, there will be like the link to the Dropbox, um, how do you call it, link to the, to the project. And... 
feel free to grade that as well. You can follow along or what I would suggest is just to watch this um, episode first and then you can like um, follow along with the recording because you can um, access the recording as well. And if you would like to and um, if you if you just want to and just want to have to have some fun feel free to uh, submit your grade to us because Diego will be here again next week and we can talk about uh, the result uh, the, the grade that you do it's not like judging it but you know we're, we're, we're just talking about it um, what are the decisions that you make and why probably um, uh, it was uh, done like that and uh, for five participants that grade that with um, with red giant tools um, we will have some. Um, we'll have some uh, nice merchandise, uh, special ed editions, um, limited editions, T-shirts for you. So, submit your grade. We'll be looking forward to it. And um, yeah, that's for next week. But for today, before we um, begin, I think uh, Diego, what do you think if we play the clip and let's watch the? I think it's three minute long clips, right? Do we? Yeah. Right. So let's let's watch the clip first, and it's already done, and it's already great, uh, right, Diego? Yes. All it's right. In, it's in English actually, but it has subtitles in Spanish. Perfect. Enjoy it. All right, everybody, enjoy. It's actually the world premiere. <laughs> If you don't have any sound, Diego, uh, can you comment on some shots? Yes. So, so this is midday. 12, 12 midday. It was so sunny, so sunny, really sunny. Well, that was the hardest thing for us. It was the hardest. It was midday. 37 Celsius degrees. <laughs> this was at night. Actually, this was at the so I paint, It's a different time of day. Street, yeah. balconies, everything, but no people. Because like that, I show that Cartagena is beautiful. Tell us about Cartagena the colors, because I think normally when you make a documentary, you have colors not in this intensity in the shop. So it ago, limits you from the start a little bit. Was it hard to work? So actually one of the stories that we were like thinking to, to record was something that was really colorful. Something that was really colorful. Cartagena is, is colorful. Oh, and look at the building. Yeah, the building is very colorful as well. Colorful is a Spanish city, Spanish historical city, so it's really colorful. But we were searching also for a uh, character with the same characteristics. Ah. So that's the reason that he was like painting in all of the colors. And in some way, what we were expecting about the grade was to grade something natural. I mean, the, in some, in many cases, when you are like talking about grading and thinking about grading, you say, okay, let's do the matrix look, or let's do the transformer look here. But this is not the case. This is a documental. This is for showing a natural beauty of a place, and it's not for Ora Chantil. For sure. <laughs> you say the word. It is. It's not for do some. You know when when there are like Hollywood movies and they show Latin America, all of them are yellow because they want to put like this is so warm, so hot. So this is not a yellow clip. It's, it's really natural. It's balanced. So in some way that that was the object. The, the objective wasn't something. That's me, actually, over there. You see? Oh, <laughs> I thought that was Tony. <laughs> no, that was me. Like carrying all the tripod and all of that thing. So that was like the, the main objective. And the great thing about this story is that he's painting all the houses, the balcony, but he's almost blind. And the city is almost blind. So he's telling us about that he. He, he's almost blind, but he can and paint. The and he also like is complaining that about that. Oh, look at the dancers. Uh, yes, because dancers in the street. That the government doesn't want the see color people. They don't. They don't want color people like in the streets and so on. So he's complaining about it. 
That's the reason that he only paints houses, buildings, but no people. For mm. sure, you can so like a like a protest to say that that, I mean, that the people in Cartagena are the most colorful. Oh, I, I like this part. I like this part. That part is funny. Listo. Tu deseo son órdenes. Okay. Ciao. All right. Wow. Thank you very much, Diego. This is really awesome. Yes. So, yes, he was chosen with Black Magic with Sigma. I graded in my studio in Colombia with a monitor and ASO. And that's it. So, Diego, um, if um, you want to, I can give you the stage now and uh, we can just directly go to your timeline and let's see how you approach your project. Is, is it okay? It is perfect. Let perfect. Then I'll switch to different. your screen now. Okay. There you so go. It was first. Okay. Probably now you see my PowerPoint, right? Um, yes. Uh, let me check. There you go. Now it's fine. All right, perfect. Okay, so actually before you start grading a project, what you need to do is just you need to start asking the client or yourself, what was the camera that you used? It's like, I mean, the, it's up to the camera, the result that you're going to get. If it's something recorded with an iPhone, I don't know, with a cell phone or with a GoPro, the grading is going to be harder than recording with a Sony camera, with an Ari, or with a Blackmagic camera. So that's something that you need to ask and you need to take care. Based on that, also, let me just move here, you need to know about the camera. So this is a Spanglish here. So the camera was a 6K Pro Pocket, and the camera is recording in 6K. We, we had the decision to choose, do we record in ProRes, or do we record in row? Uh, how many stops uh, of of dynamic range have the camera? Uh, how many bits? So this is a, if I'm not wrong, is a 16 stops camera, and the bit depth is 12 bit. So was it like that? Then, when grading before the start grading, you already know about the camera, and now you have to ask, okay, how long? I will going to spend grading a project. And this is the most important. It can be a personal project. This is a personal project, but you need to finish it. You need to finish it and you need to like take care about it. If someone is asking you to create or to grade a project, you need to ask the same thing for yourself. Then after that, you need to ask, hey, do I going to work or grade the project based in a display refer workflow or based in a scene refer workflow. In my case, I was like, okay, I want to take the advantage of all the high dynamic range of the scene and also the white color gamut. So based on that, my decision was, okay, let's grade also in a scene refer workflow. And the other reason that I, that I select this workflow First time, you will see that it's so different to start grading using a display refer workflow that I've seen refer. But also in my goals, probably next month, I will regrade this clip in HDR. I so see. because it was like graded based on the scene, all I need to do is like switch the output from a Rec 709 to an HDR monitor, and then I need to trim. Trim a little bit or refine but I will not have to do like everything again. That's that's a very convenient with a color management framework nowadays, right, Diego? Just imagine yeah. back in the days when you don't have color management framework, um, those, uh, how do you call it? Those deliverables has to be remastered. It means like you have to like regrade it from the beginning to do the HDR versions. Am I correct on that department, yeah. Diego? Yeah, so this is something that you need to ask before. And you need to, like, also in, me, in my case, it was my, my decision as a colorist. I say, okay, I, I, want to, I want to grade this project in HDR. And I also want to have a great starting point. So that's the reason that I say, okay, let's start with scene refer. 
at that moment, I need to send this project to the painter. I didn't have the time to grade it in HDR. So I do a SDR version, but it's going to be in HDR. I don't know when, probably next month, <laughs> I will be back in, in Colombia, but I will do it. I will do it. So that's also, that, as you say, you have to think in the future and in a future proof project. And that's the reason we graded based on the scene refer workflow. All right. So then I, I need to ask myself or the client about the screen. If it's a narrative project, if it's a fiction project, if it's a spot, commercial project, video clip, because based on that, you need to calculate your time. If it's, for example, a narrative project, this is a short documentary, probably a, will, I will have some scenes that they are going to be different. In this case, we didn't have any light in the scenario. We didn't have any fancy things. It was just my friend Tony with a camera, all of his talent, and me, and the sun was that. What? So based on that, you have also to think that the grading probably will be a little bit difficult, more difficult than if you have a big crew with lights and so on. Also, what you have to think about it is that where this is going to be displayed. If it's going to be for cinema, if this is going to be for YouTube, Right now, it's probably it's going to be just for YouTube. Is it going to be for an OTT, the thing Netflix, Amazon, or this is going to be a local TV a project? Always ask about it. Don't start a project without knowing where this project is going to be. So based on that, also, you need to start like also thinking about the time. So the length of the project, we say that it was like three minutes, four minutes around. So when this happened, you need to think, okay, how many hours do I going to spend? Six hours, eight hours, a week, a month. So probably you are thinking, okay, in my case, I will spend, I don't know, three hours, four hours, or I will spend a month because I'm starting in grading, you can say. But I would say that start asking like your partners, your partners colleagues, or start looking at some forums and ask how long the industry takes to grade four minutes and try to spend the same, try to spend the same. Because based on that, what you're going to do is you're going to like start like analyzing your time and your speed and going to the standard. So in this case, for example, I spend less than five hours, four, four hours, during this project. And based on that, I was also like thinking, okay, and you have to ask, for example, for a client, how is going to be the workflow? Do I going to take a project from Premiere or from Avid or from Final X, and then do I have to conform? This will take some time. Or do the client is going to send me a clip Let's think a ProRes or a DNX, and do I have to cut it and then grade it? Probably this will, will be like faster, but maybe I will not have the camera footage. And in this case, I will show you that to have the camera footage is an advantage. Then you also need to ask is, is this project was editing in Resolve? So if, if it was editing in Resolve, probably you have an advantage because you can start immediately grading on it. For sure, you have to clean the timeline a little bit, but you can start thinking on it. And finally, you need to ask, do this is just for finishing or this is just for grading? Based on that, what you're going to say is, okay, if just finish the grade and then send to the client, or do I have to finish? What is finishing? Finish is adding the credits, adding the music, I don't know if there is a graphic, add the graphics, so you need to ask about it. One of the problems that I found more in grading is that we don't ask about it. Probably you say, okay, it's just grading, and then the client say to us, hey, we need to, we need to add, we need to add some graphics, we need to add some credits, and then you say, but I, but I didn't, I mean, I, my, my fee is not about that. 
but at the end you finish doing it because you didn't say at the beginning. So always say to the client, is just grading or is grading and finishing. If you don't say that, probably you will finish the project. So this is a great tip of life for that. Diego, a quick question. Um, are you also considering the conforming as your territory as well, as your responsibility as well? Or is there any like um, conforming, um, how do you call it, artist that works with you? Okay, right now, actually a person, a person worked with me and she, she actually conformed the project. I see. But I mean, if I don't have the person, I will conform it. But I also depending if it's conforming, it's in detection, or if it's a project like edit in Resolve, uh, the fee will be different. So if, there, there is a conforming fee um, on top of the grading fee as well? Yes, I and see. that you have to separate. Yes. When, when you send a, like, a, I don't know, like a paper with all of the expenses, you have to say like, okay, one fee for conforming, one fee for grading, one fee for finishing, and also always think in the storage. Yes. Always think in the storage. Grading, in grading, we work with big files, really big files. So always think in how, how many storage is going to be and for how long. Because sometimes the client think that because you grade one project, then the next year he can ask you for some, like, I don't know, for some changes. And he, I'm sure he think that you still have the footage. That is crazy. <laughs> um, Diego, for like for our friend who who is not um, like for our audience who probably not oh, very well aware what conforming is, can can you please describe um, in a in a quick um, uh, quick some some couple of words like what conforming uh, really is? All right. So what is conforming? So you know that we have offline post-production programs and online post-production programs. So offline is actually editing. So the reason you call offline is because you edit with some proxies for editing with files that don't have the, like the raw footage or they are not in 8K or in 12K. But the reason you edit with that one is because you want to, I mean, you want to create a story, but you don't have the computer for that. So you edit with low res files, with proxy or with daily files. So that's the reason we call offline, because it's not the online footage, but you can edit with them. And in editing, you don't need the most like the, the fancy footage. You just need playback. And if the footage is giving you playback, that's the footage you need in editing. That's offline. But the industry has different, many different editing programs and many also different grading programs. So you have to communicate timeline between each other. That's what we call conforming. When we replicate one timeline from an offline program to an online program, the way we reconnect that timeline and where we replicate that timeline to another one is based in a XML file, EDL, AFF, and what you do is you import that file in, for example, in this case, into DaVinci Resolve. And this gives you like all of the cuts of the clips. And then you reconform with the online footage or with the original camera footage that in this case is the 6K footage, raw footage. So because, that is conforming. Because, because that's the, the footage that we want to play around with, right? I mean, that's the footage yeah. that, for sure, you can recall with the best camera ever. Yeah. But if you don't grade with the, with the footage that was from the camera, it's like you're losing money. Yes, <laughs> yes. Well, thank you very much, Diego. That's fantastic um, explanation there. For sure. Yeah, so based on that, that, that you need to take care. Then you have to say, okay, I'm going to grade based on scene, based on a scene workflow. So do I grade based in ACES or do I use a Resolve color management? So now let's go to Resolve. So let me share again my screen and let me go to Resolve. So probably now you see my... Here. Yes. Yeah, I filmed only with one camera the whole time. So ACES would be possible but not urgently needed. 
Yeah, for sure, for sure. And that's that's what I'm going to show you and I will show you why I made my decision. So in this case, for example, what you're going to see, I have the footage from the camera and I can start grading based on a display, on my display that is here. So probably I will have to, I don't know, like move the lift, move the gain, and like maybe start like fixing based on the scene and so on. And then have like a starting pointing and then like continue grading with that. But actually one of the reasons that I think that based on a scene workflow is great is because you don't need to start grading using or with a, with a great project or with great images or with log images. Because the problem of log images is that they are great for capturing dynamic range, but you have to, in some way, de-log the image. So the first step that you are doing with a great image that many people, all of us were doing for so many years, was de-logging. I have my latency is a little bit not so good here. In some way, was de-logging the footage to have like a normalized footage. It was like that. And this but is just by right. increasing the saturations and contrast of the yes, footage. Saturation, right? link, and again, contrast. And that was like the starting point. So the good thing about doing this based on the scene is that this step is not anymore. You skip the step. So let's see how we can do it. So if I go here to the file, then to the project settings, and here in the project settings, if I move to color management, you can see in the color science different starting points. Da Vinci YRGB. If you don't do anything, just leave Gamma Gain and use your color grading tools, probably you are you grading using your display. But in Da Vinci YRGB, if you know more about color transformations, about color space transform and so on, you can also base grade on the scene but you don't have any assist of the project. If you want to DaVinci Resolve assist you in the color management decisions, then you can start with these options. So for example, you can start using ACES. Um, I'm sorry, Diego. Are you yeah. sharing uh, project settings now? Yes, it's not showing? It's not, it's not showing. Okay, so let me come back here. Okay, probably now project settings. Yes, perfect. No. Yeah, sorry, I was just like shader resolve, but because <laughs> this is a pop-up window, <laughs> so that's the reason it wasn't shading. Okay, so in color management, you have DaVinci Y RGB. When you, in most of the cases, grade based on a display, but you can also like grade based on a scene, but you have to use your knowledge to do that. Resolve will not assist you in anything. If you want assist assistance from Resolve in a framework, you can use this option. You can use DaVinci UI RGB Color Manage or ACES. Let's select ACES just to see what it's doing here. So in this case, I have an input device transform and an output device transform. The input device transform is going to, in some way, to put the footage into the color space of ACES. ACES is a wide color space, high dynamic range. So because I have raw footage, as you notice here, I don't need to select anything. I don't need to select anything because he will understand. Can, then, can I ask a question? Yes. Diego, could you go from the waveform to the CIA 1931 representation sure. so we can see more what color space we have? The lower one, yes. So maybe that helps a little bit to visualize where we are with the color that's spaces. That's perfect. Yeah, that's perfect. So let me come back here. Thank you. That's great. So when I'm actually here in ACES, so if I not select any input transform and if it's raw file, then I can start working in an ACES color space. So ACES color space, you can see it. Right now you cannot see it in the in the diagram of the left. You can but put one in. I Sorry to interrupt. 
I, I can actually put it. Let me see. The second uh, one, yes. Uh, let's come actually to AP0 first. Thank you. So the first Thank thing that ACE is going to do is that he will like move all the projects, black, all the clips, Blackmagic Row, the Steam ProRes, and he will like put it here in AP0. That is a big color space, really big color space, bigger than the colors that we can see. Yeah. But the problem of ACES AP0 is that it's not a friendly color space. It's more for storage, for interchange. So inside, what is doing resolve is that then is for working is moving the footage from AP0 to AP1. This color space that is even bigger than Rec 2020. So this is the footage when you work, but you will have all the colors and the high dynamic range of AP0. So when you are there, the problem is that you cannot see AP0. There is no monitor with color space AP0. So you have to map the image from an AP0 color space to a monitor. And that's where you select here in the ACCC tip, the output transform to map the images from AP0 to your monitor. In this case, it's Rec 709. And when you do here, let's actually move this part here. And I'm going to save it, but before saving, please check the image and also check the waveform and the CA chromaticity to see what is happening. May I ask a question? Yes. Do you use gamma compression from AP0 to AP1, which no. is in ACES 1.03? Okay. Yes. Actually, it's, it's already like, in this case, a gamut compress. So what it's doing is that uh, we'll fix the highlight group, the, the, pro, the blue problem with the highlights. I mean, you can use it. For this project, probably I will not. But in the new version, in the 18, this will come by default. You cannot select it. Oh, okay. Yes, in the in the 18, this will uh, come by default. I'm, you actually, I'm not I mean, aware of that. <laughs> yes. yes, you actually will need it. I mean, by default, it's good because sometimes you have that blue problems in the highlights that will you will see something purple or something with like yeah. a digital problem. So, for so example, that, a footage that that is captured by. Um, uh, camera gamut, which is like bigger than AP, AP0, like for example, the Ari Alexa, they normally can capture more blues uh, uh, in, 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 the, in, the, you know, in the blue territory. And then when it is mapped into the AP0, then you start to see that some gamut are still outside of the AP0, and that's where the, the gamut compressions algorithm plays. Um, to solve the problem. <laughs> yes, yes, and it's one of the main problems in ACES, but right now with the ACES 1.3 and with the new resource, the 18, this will this will be by default. In this case, with the new one, that will be. Really nice. Before you have to thank select. You, thank you. All right. So now you hit save and look at the image and also look at here. So when I hit save, there you go. Very this is nice. happening. All right. So look, now I don't have a great image. You see that my waveform already have, let's, let's say that is the tonal range is expanded and the colors are going to be like mapped to a Rex Venom 9 display. Okay. So let me just... Nothing is clipped. Nothing is clipped. That's the thing. Probably you see, you will see like, in this case, like the highlights are clipped and so on. But no, the, the image is there, like all the quality is there. So let me just grab one still here. And nothing is clear because if I come here and I move a little bit this down, come on, look, everything is there. You see everything, all of the thing, all of the information is there, but it's a better starting point. But in this case, I was thinking, okay, Let's see how Resolve Color Management will work. So let me actually reset ACES. Let me come back here to the Project Management. And I will select Resolve Color Manage. And here in Resolve Color Manage, you have 
also different options. You can start grading automatically. I mean, an automatically color manage, SDR and HDR. The reason you select this is based on your footage. If your footage is in SDR, probably you need to select SDR. But right now, most of the footage that we have from our cameras is in HDR. So you have to put HDR. But this is, I mean, we want to go deeper. So if I come here to and select this, I have different uh, options to select here. Here you can see many color spaces from a display, Rep 709, 2020, P3, but also you have one that is different, Da Vinci White Gamut. So what the Da Vinci White Gamut is going to do, it's going to be similar as ACES in some way, that is going to put the footage, all of your clips, it doesn't matter if it's camera, uh, animation, it's going to put everything into the Da Vinci White Gamut, that is a big color space and with high dynamic range, and then it's going to map this to an output color space. And then if I come here and I hit save, come on, it's going to think. So look, I have another starting point. All right, so with this, what I see is, okay, with ACES probably the highlights were a little bit different, but with Da Vinci White Gamut, the highlights are a little bit like lower. So based on that, my decision was, okay, let's start grading on Da Vinci White Gamut. Okay, any questions so far, Max, Dr. Sassi? <laughs> Can you switch the um, CIE 1931 to Da Vinci White Gamut so people can see what it does? Perfect. So if I come here and I can and I select Da Vinci White Gamut, I don't know if it is too abstract the whole thing, but it gives a little bit of an idea Look, of the space. Yes. So this is what is there. Happening. You go. So it's really big. So it's converting the camera. Black Magic Raw will not be Black Magic Raw. Will not be Arri. Will not be ProRes. Will not be sRGB. Is putting everything into Da Vinci White Gamut, but because there is no color space in Da Vinci White Gamut for display, you cannot select in any display. That's the reason you need to map it to the color space when you are going to work. And this is Rec 709. And based on that, that one were the decision we took here in the project settings Da Vinci White Gamut and output color space. Okay, so now I have like, based on that, I say, okay, I will work with Da Vinci White Gamut. Okay, that was my decision. Then I was thinking, okay, I have raw footage. And I see that my footage was recorded with the height a little bit up. I want to start a little bit like, with a little bit low the, the exposure for have a better starting point. So in Resolve, you can do that if you come here and you can like start like fixing. Actually, by default, this is coming like this. It was even highlight. Mm -hmm. And by default, you can say, OK, you can modify the row things here by clip. But it will be better to modify it in the project settings. Here you can come to Camera Row. And in Camera Row, you can come to Black Magic Row. And in Black Magic Row, you can say, OK, let's not use the camera metadata. Let's use even a better a better way. So I can come here to the exposure. There is one good thing about, a, about the Black Magic Row that is really impressive is this the highlight recovery. The highlight recovery is an option that is, is going to do what it's saying. The name is recovering from the highlights. That's it. So then what I can do is, OK, let's put a little bit the exposure a little bit down, one stop, and then let's save. Come on. It's working. There you go. So now I can see a little bit more of images like here. 
Okay, you see, now is I have more information here. So now that I decide the starting point, how to work with the raw footage, I can also change the ISO. For example, if I need it, I can put like a lower ISO. But, and you can start like grading, note by note, clip by clip. But in my case, I, I always like to grade based on a structure on a structure and probably that structure will be okay how many nodes do i need for grading this project let's think that this is a project that is going to look natural so when you say natural it's like a project that i mean that probably will not have many secondaries probably i need i need a good skin i need good colors so based on that what is going to happen here is I'm going to start like creating nodes. So for example, the first node, let's see, I will, I will work with the light. May I ask a question? Yeah. Uh, did you start it with this special picture because it has the highest dynamic range? Thank you. Okay. That's a great question. That's a great question actually before, before like deciding the number of nodes. Selecting the, the hero image, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The first rule of color, the only rule, is like to watch what you are going to grade. <laughs> where, where you have the most problems with, and that will set the level for everything else. Yes, yes. And when you watch, you are going to see, okay, which is more representative, like clip or shot to start grading. Is it going to be this one? That is, let's, let's come here, this one, or is it going to be this one? And probably these are not going to be because these are B-roll footage. If it's B-roll, they are just going to be in one part. So that's the reason that this I start with this shot. When I start with this shot, the reason is that it's not a, it's not a general shot, but it's a medium shot. But it's giving me like the, the character and the character is in the is in the short documentary all the time. So that's the reason I decide that. It's, it's a it's a good representation of the of the It's a good representation. It's a good representation. So when it was like that, then I was like thinking, okay, how many nodes, how many process I'm going to do? I kinda of start like just doing this one, create this thing for three nodes, then come here and say, okay, this one is easier, so I'm going to do one. Then this one is, is a little bit like harder, I don't know, and let's put three or let's put four. And this way I can have like different nodes in every clip. But in some cases, this is good. In my case, this is not my workflow. I, I like to be organized. So the reason I like to be organized is because if there is like an adjustment of there is something I need to replace in all the nodes, I have the same, the same structure. So what I'm doing here is the first thing I'm creating is a structure for my project. And the reason I say for my project is because every project has different, like, listing problems or necessities. Yes. So in this case, for example, the first node need to be like controlling the light. Let's put light here. The second one will be to control the color. The third one will be to control the, or maybe to make a pop in the image. The fourth one can be just to create a, a small look. Let's say a small look. It doesn't not need to be like a, I don't know, like Twilight a look or Batman look. No, just, just something characteristic. And then, what I'm thinking after creating so many general like processes is, okay, probably I need to refine something. Maybe I need to refine the face or maybe because this is a really colorful short documentary, maybe I need to refine one color. One color will be really saturated. So I will need to refine it. So when I'm thinking of a small like parts, I like to put them in a parallel node. So here I'm going to like start adding parallel nodes and maybe I can put here a skin 
and or I can come here and I can say this is secondary one, secondary two. I can do many more. It doesn't mean that I have to do something here, but maybe in one case I will need it. So something like that. The other one I can do is, let me come back here. I can add more nodes and then in another node, this can be, I don't know, let's clean the blacks. You know, in color grading, we want always the, in many cases, the black to be pure because it's giving the stability to the colors. So in this one, you can put the clean black. Then you can make another one when you can create, let's think, a vignette. And then you can do another one. Then this one can be the trim. You say, okay, I like the, I like how it's doing, how it's working, but I want to trim a little bit my, I don't know, I want a correction. So based on that, what you can have is a trim note at the end. So or, this is- Or when you're working with somebody else's, in this case, um, the, I don't yeah. know, if you have director of photography or Yeah, if your director of photography is with you, so you do that. So based on that, probably you have another structure with 11 nodes. I always think that, and actually I have a, a, a friend, he's also a, one of my, my master. He said to me, if you cannot make the best image with seven nodes, you will not make it with 30 and you will not make it with 40. Sorry, I, come, I, came, I press another button. <laughs> you will not make it with 40. So based on that, probably I just have like six, seven nodes that ones are going to be the, like the, where everything is. The other one will be for small details. Um, and also, in this case, you have to think of the time you have. If you are going to have like, I don't know, like two days or three days, probably you will have more time for refining. If you have two hours, you need to be fast. And also, the other thing you have to think on your machine. The more nodes you have in your machine, the more time the render is going to take. It, it, I mean, a render with 12, with 20 nodes will be really long in a normal machine. Right now, I'm in a computer because I'm not in my studio in Colombia. So probably will spend more time than if I'm grading with just three or four nodes. So this is another consideration to start making your structure. Diego. Yes. Um, do you have some time for a question? For sure. Awesome. There is a question from GG in the audience. Um, he's wondering what's the difference between a uh, serial and parallel node because, you know, it, it looks the same, right? Um, okay. The, from, from, from here, it looks the same, but um, what are the differences? All right. So serial, what is going to happen is that this node is taking the signal from this node all the time. Yes, this node is taking the signal all the time. With parallel, what is going to happen is that the mixture is going to be here. All of the mixture in these nodes is going to be here. So that's the reason that I like it for secondaries. Because the secondaries are not going to take a big part of the image. So that's the reason I like it here in parallel. In some way, for because I want the mixture here. If I want some, this thing, I don't know, some glow, or some like visual effects like features here, I will use it here because I want the mixture to be all in one part. And also it's like another like visual convention. Like big changes are going to be in serial, small changes or even corrections are going to be in parallel, something like that. Thank all you. right, perfect. So, okay, based on that, also, what you need to do to think doing a, a node structure is okay. Now you have all the nodes, but also you need to like, I don't know, like establish a little bit more in that template structure you are doing. So the first one is, for example, here in color. When I come here to the parade, you will see, let me actually move a little bit here just for you to see all the colors. So in color, what you're going to, or what you're going to see that, okay, it's a little bit blue, everything. 
when you go to the bars and you start moving the gain, for example, from the blue, and also moving the green from the from the from the from the game. What you are going to notice is that every time you move one, like the colors are going to like fight between each other. Like if you move one, then the other one will increase. And this is happening because of the Luma Mix. So what the Luma Mix is doing is that it's going to preserve your luminance when you are moving the colors in the leaf, gamma, and gain. It's going to preserve the luminance. But this is going to be a problem if you want to make all of them the same. So in my no structure in this one, I'm going to put this to zero. Yes, just to zero. Because when you are doing to zero, if I move this one, now you will see that the colors are not going to move so much. They are going to be more static. So I come here. And then the other thing that I do is I come here to the vignette. The vignette, let's think that is going to be really similar in most of the shots. So I can come here, then make a circle, like really big, inverted, see what is happening here. So this is the place when it's going to be a little bit longer. And then like decrease a little bit the light. Okay, so that, that will be in all my shots, all my shots. Okay, so now I have my structure. So now I can save this as a still. Okay, let me reset this one. Okay, perfect about it, good. Loving it. All right, so now you are going to think, you need to think about the time you have. Are you going to grade shot by shot? Are you going to use groups? Are you going to use any sort of timeline or are you going to use a remote versions? So one of the ways that I like, for example, for grading is to resolve, organize me all the clips because some of them have the same name to organize me all the clips. So what I can do here is go to view actually. And what is it is here in for timeline. No, it's going to be like here. Okay, in this part, timeline thumbnail mode. And by default is A. So A is the, the order of the clips that are in the timeline. But if I hit C, look what is happening. It's changing me the order of the clips. Hmm. So based on that, if I grade one clip, for example, this one, I have the opportunity to copy really fast to all of the clips. So this is in one way I love this option because like it's giving me all of these shots are the same. So if I grade this one, then it will like do or I can copy really fast from one to another one. This is like listing one option. The other one will be the next one. Let me show it to you. Let me come back here to A. The other one is, let's actually grade with remote versions. So what the remote versions are going to do? That means that if you are, have this name and this is have the same name, if I grade this clip because they have the same name, this grading will be at the same time here. By default, the behavior of resolve is local versions. So every clip will be different. But if you want this, as a workflow for your starting point, what you need to do is right click and say, use remote grades. So when you use remote grades, actually what is happening right now is that this clip, for example, here, have the same icon than this one. So for let me just make something aggressive. Today I'm green and my computer is really slow today, sorry. <laughs> no problem. It happens, Diego. It happens and every one of us hates that this like beach ball. 
<laughs> okay, so what is happening here is that I'm increasing the the blue, sorry, the green. And as you notice, here and here is automatically doing at the same time, at the same time. So this is what we call remote versions. For example, in movies, I love this as a starting point. In realities, sometimes I like it. And it's, it's a great way to advance fast. So this is remote versions. There is another workflow. The other workflow that you can use is grouping, make groups. So here, let me actually come back here to local grades. And what you can do in groups is that you are going to say like, okay, there is this interview. Let's make them part of a group. So what I can do is select them using this like view mode or also coming here to the live box and selecting, for example, in this case is this clip, this clip, and this clip, these four clips. And then what you can do is if you come back here, you can create one group, add into a new group, or also here in the live box, you can do it from here. The reason we use the live box in this case for this option is because you have an overall view of all the clips of your project. So it will be faster to select them, but it's up to your workflow. Then you can select add into new group, and then you can say interview. So when you have the clips in the interview as part of the group, you have different options. The first option is that here in clips, you have the ability to see the clips, only the interviews. So that way you can see all the clips and they will be like all in one moment. The other thing great about groups is that you have different sub levels. You have pre clip and you have post clip. But also you have the clip level. So what you can do is, for example, let's think in the post clip, you can, I don't know, adjust the brightness here a little bit less, for example, like that. And this will be like your starting point. And because it's in the post clip, this will affect all of the clips from my post clip. And also what you can do here in the post clip is that, I don't know, probably put a little bit less of, of blue. It's too much, sorry, like that. And now it's going to be in all of them. But for example, as you notice, these clips look a little bit different. So when one is different, this probably have like my structure. And here, here is where, let me delete it. In clip is where you are going to say, okay, this clip look different than the other one. So I need to do some refinement. So that way you will do it like in the clip mode. So you can select like different ways for start grading. I will say it's up to you. It's up to the project, it's up to the colorist. In this case, what I did was remote versions. And then here in the view, like timeline thumbnail mode. That was like my my like my my option to grade this project. Sometimes I work with groups, some more cases I don't, but it's up to you. And the last thing that I like to set up when grading and when I start grading, we're almost finishing, but this is a good tip. So I come here to the timeline and I really like to compare. I always say, and I say to my students, don't trust in your eyes. The eyes, okay, for sure, the eyes are going to be better, better, better. But the problem of the eyes is that the more you look at an image, the more you like. So be aware of that. Yes. That's a big problem. And the other thing, don't trust in the visual memory. Never trust in your visual memory. Always compare. For example, you can grade this clip and then you can come here. And probably you think that you know how was the grading. And you grade it because you think you know how was it. But then you compare them and they will not look the same. So based on that, I love to work with gallery stills, but more I like to come here, work space, and I also got this part actually color, and work with different playheads, multiple multiple playheads. So here I can have a playhead B, and I can put this playhead, for example, in this clip, 
Then I can have another playhead. Playhead actually here, see. And then, for example, let's put that the interview is here also. So as you notice, I have multiple playheads here, here, here. So by default, you cannot see, okay, right now in this option, you have like, okay, in this version, I don't know if it's, this is new or probably I, I did it before. You have like a, like a shortcut for moving multi between multiple playheads. So you can come here, option A, and now you're going to, what will the option? Okay, let me just actually check. Color, active playhead, okay, command A, no, but command A is going to select everything, command B, command O, okay. So you see, I'm moving from one playhead, this thing that I'm in the playhead A, and I want to move to the playhead B, so I select the playhead, the, like the shortcut for the playhead B, and I go directly with that. In that way, I can save stills, but I can also move between different parts of the timeline. I love to grade with multiple playheads. So that's all before starting, actually, and we haven't graded <laughs> anything. <laughs> that's the preparations. That's the preparation. Yeah, I find and that, I, I found found it like really interesting how like different colorists has their different approach, uh, Diego. Like I, for example, I never use like a multiple different playheads or shared note or whatsoever. I'm s always sticking with the groups. <laughs> yes, yes. In my case, I mean, but it's up to the project. I always yes. say. Yes. I always I say. I have also one question, Diego. Yes. Um, Am I right that you also edit the movie? You cut the movie? Yeah, in this case, correct? how the process work, how the process was. So I was in Madrid here in December and actually my, my students, this is great. Like my students start editing. All of them have different like cuts and then I select the best ones and I refine them. I refine them, okay. I, I make one thing and so on, and I refine them all in resolve, all in resolve. My, my idea where I wanted to go with it was when you take a, a prime grading with it, so you set up the colors, you might add it differently than when you take just a raw footage. Yeah, but actually that's what I like of color management. You know, when yeah. actually an editor start grade or start like editing with log images with gray images so the editor will not know if if a shot is underexposed if a shot is overexposed if has grain he, he will not know the technical problems if he's grading and if he's editing under color management or at least with a lot in the clip he will know if a shot it wasn't recorded good so he will not put it so that is helping, is going to help us the life in color <laughs> because he will not put it because he say, no, this is horrible. I will not put this. <laughs> but when it's Locke, Locke is actually like putting everything in an awful place that at some point looks good. And he will not notice the difference. Thank you. I have another question. Am I right? You said you have no light set up. But I see some reflection uh, or reflectors in the footage. Was there some bounce cards in, in use? And if so, do you match then one image to the other where you didn't use bounce cards? Yeah, no, we, we actually didn't use. We actually didn't use. Ah. No. In the this map? picture, it seems a little bit because the light comes from behind. In this one, for example, yeah. This one looks uh, bounced, or there is something that bounced light, and the other one that you showed, where he is on that uh, mini gallery on the street, it looks without bouncing. So I was not certain if you match those uh, moods against each other. Mm, no, in this case, it was like just doing one and then like matching the other one. Okay. Yeah, I mean probably. Yeah, it was the most important thing here, or the hardest thing that you will find the people that is going to grade this project is the face of him. 
yeah. in face of him. This this is going to be harder because this is a, like a, you see a lot of light, and the face of him is going to be harder. Uh, here in these parts where the where the highlights are in the cloud, that are going to be harder like to recover. Mm -hmm. And and yeah, in most of the part, I will say that Tony did an excellent job recording because it, it wasn't so hard. It wasn't so hard. Now, Tony is great, and for everyone interested, uh, Max had some shows with him. So if you want to see which force of nature he is with the camera, check out the Max on Yeah, we used YouTube to do channels. it in the, in the Demystifying post-productions, where yeah. Diego and Tony were um, uh, guests in there. So if you are interested in that show, you can go to our YouTube channel, Max on Training Team, and check out the recordings as well. And there are plenty of... Uh, um, how do you call it? Sessions with Tony and Diego as well. Yeah, yeah. So now, now color grade, please. <laughs> <laughs> back right. to you, Diego. <laughs> yeah. All right. So, for example, let's just actually come back here. Just fast because I don't want to change your color grading here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So. The first thing that I was doing is that here in the light, I was actually like moving the offset. The reason that I was moving the offset, it was getting my latency here is not so good. Wait, now it's so fast. Let me come back, let me reset it. So, moving the offset, I'm finding the best way for the light. Yes. Finding the best way for the light, for example, now can be 12 or something like that. Finding the best way. And what I was do you doing here is was using the waveform. Yes, just the waveform to finding the best way. For example, here can be a good way. Then I can come here to listing gain or maybe a little bit more or lift and just put this to have like more blacks, something like that. Then in color, I was moving actually to parade. And then in parade, what I was looking was that the blue channel is actually like, it has like more in the highlights than the other channels. So I can, I was coming here from to the offset and moving this a little bit down. And I and you will see that now is is less like blue, also here, more, and also in this part. Then I have a like a better image. Probably you can add a little bit more. Let's come back here to the light, and actually move a little bit more of gamma. something like that. Then in the pop, what I was doing with the pop was like popping up a little bit more the image. So you can do that. I actually like to do that with the curves. So in the curves, I come here and I put editable splines. So I like to make here an S curve. Moving this one and here a little bit more, okay. My latency is not so good, sorry. <laughs> Actually, then I can come back here to the light. What you're going to notice is that every time in color grading, you're moving forward and you're moving back all time. One forward, one back, and then you're going to have like something like this. But actually I found that, for example, here in my pop, I'm actually like crushing the highlights here. Okay, let me actually reset this. Just probably then here I need it. Okay, come back here. Come on. It looks like my computer is also with jet lag. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so maybe a little bit more like this. Okay. 
Yeah. So based on that, I will have like, I don't know, let's think that starting point is not the best one, <laughs> but you will, you will make a better result, I know. But it's just with three notes. Try to make the best possible in three notes. These are the kinks. Also, so you're, so you're handling the exposure, the saturations and the contrast on this, that first three notes, right? Yeah, that first three notes. Yes, probably right now, yeah, right now it's greeny, so probably I have to increase a little bit in the color, a little bit more over here. Not so much, probably a little bit. Come on. Okay, now it's red. And now here, one less. I really like to work with, in some way, with printer lights and also yeah. here. I really like to work with these three points, moving in a lot, take one, take another one. In this case, for example, probably you will see, hey, are, going, are you not going to use any film emulation, LUT, and so on? No. And it wasn't any of the objective. It was like, okay, let's, let's do something uh, natural. Let's do something that is not going to take the viewer from what the character is showing and from what he's telling. That was the thing. Then what I can do here is maybe create one look. You can make the looks, for example, I usually, right now, I'm gonna start working so much with the HDR. So with the HDR, I can like make some temperature here to move a little bit and to make a little bit more of, let's see, like, I don't know, like warm. Or what you can do here is you can say, okay, I can do like these ones and let's put a little bit more of yellow in the light. This will be so similar as doing uh, actually a Luma keyer and selecting the highlights and moving the like the the yellow to that part. It will be a, like really similar. It's not showing the result. I don't know why. Then what I was doing here is actually creating here in the skin a qualifier. Okay, it was showing. It was just so late doing the changes. <laughs> you have something that is really great that is called the depth map did you saw that max yeah but the thing is like i haven't oh. downloaded the uh, 18 versions 18 as well but i saw some people uh demonstrating it it looks like really yeah. amazing so now you can just like select your uh, foreground and separate it in the uh, with the background because that's plenty of like that's literally I, I do a lot of those stuff, especially if you have like a subjects and background like this, you know, uh, you just want to tackle the backgrounds without or, you know, the separations always like put the warmth in the in, a, in the subjects and then cool down the environment a little bit, something like this. And um, I think it will be great. But to be honest, I haven't played with, <laughs> with it. So, yeah, so actually awesome. it's like that. Actually, it's like that. It's like right now. I was like selecting the face, but the problem here of selecting the face was that if I come here when the selection is that the face has a similar color than the hat and also that the ring here. And so it was hard. You, are, you guys are going to notice when you upgrade this that it was harder right, to have this. Okay. So yeah, at the end I did it. You have to tweak a little bit here. But probably I will use the depth map. So let me actually like just show you how the depth map works. So let me come here and let's see if my computer will not die with the depth map. Actually, <laughs> a funny joke is that with the with the 18 version, I will have to change my computer. <laughs> That's for sure. That's for sure. I will have to change my computer because it's, it's actually it's great. But it's going to require a lot of power, a lot of power. The object mass is absolutely amazing. But yeah, I mean, you need power. Okay. It's artificially intelligence based and that takes a lot of yeah. power. It, it's yeah. smarter than the previous uh, version. Smart. <laughs> it's smarter, but yeah, you need power. And, actu and we actually, in the NAB, we test the Mac Studios. And, and how is it? Wow, it was, it was amazing. Oh, wow. Amazing, amazing, running so fast. So, for example, in this case, let me show you what this is going to do. I'm just giving like signal here. And if I come here to the highlight mode, 
Maybe click. Alright. And then, okay, it's showing me. Then just actually move it here. Just for you to see what is happening. Okay, come on, computer. <laughs> Okay, you select here faster. The reason I select it faster is because it's taking a lot of uh, resources from the machine. Yeah. So you see, actually, the beach ball is trying to, to say, I don't want to work. <laughs> <laughs> so then select the dev map preview. Okay, there you see. And now you can come here to isolation. And look, it's already giving me here. Wow. At the moment. Okay, it's like, it's getting crazy. Come on. And you can refine here with the isolation. You can come here, and if you come here to isolation, so it's refining. Come on. Okay, you can refine a little bit more here if you want it. And then what you can do is actually, because it's already there, you can move this to your, in some way, to your node. And here, also the alpha. Disable here, disable the preview. Okay. And let me actually connect again my output. And what this node is going to have, is going to have the the mask yeah. of the dead map. You see? So now I have in some way fixed the problem because it is a highlight at the background and I have a C depth map. So now I can like move a little bit the gamma a little bit and take him out. Put a little bit more light of him. So you can just like uh, tackle the subject without um, affecting the Yes, background. and without and without doing a qualifier. I actually think that the version 18 is like saying to us, hey, you don't need more qualifier, you don't <laughs> need more mask, you don't need more tracking, because the dev map is going to fix a lot of things, and also the new object mask and the surface tracking is like saving us like the difficult tracking that we were doing with mask and tracking them. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So that was like something like that, and at the end what I like with the clean black is because sometimes when you are like doing a look, uh, you want to clean your blacks. So I like to come here and then come here to the loom versus, actually here, this one, loom versus sat. And here I like to select a point. And that's it, moving this one here. So that was my grading. It is not showing the same as you saw it. My computer is jet lag here. <laughs> <laughs> but it is it, the structure. It's the structure. So you are going to get a footage that is going to have the same timeline that I have it. All you need to do is to cut it using scene detections. And what I will recommend you is do a fine thing in the in your secondaries to put the magic bullet look in the look and that will be a great for you like start experimenting and also adding some things and also play with the new features of the 18. Yeah, uh, seems like GG is, is um, how do you call it, enjoying it. Um, he seems to be going to downloading the 18 versions. I hope so. Um, I think he, he liked the, the depth map. Impressive. I, Impressive. I, I don't know. Um, for example, I know many, many of you guys in Maxon were in VFX. At the NAB, the FX people were crazy about the dead map. Oh, like, wow. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy. And the object map is amazing. Diego, I have a completely different other question than Da Vinci Resolve 18. While you were shooting, and I have to admit, I'm a huge fan of Setzo Way. So did you add cray cards for your shooting or a coloring meter or a Macbeth chart or something? No. Or did you have just shot? 
<laughs> we wish. <laughs> okay. We wish, but we didn't have anything. The truly, the truly was that we went to the place and we didn't even have any story. <laughs> so, so we were like impromptu. searching for a story <laughs> to record. And, and for yeah. sure, I'm also a fan of that because that giving like, like in some way, like how like, like best tools for shooting, but also for grading. I love Maverick charts. Yeah. In this case, yeah. we were in vacations. <laughs> <laughs> I want to recall something. Okay, one more question. Um, documentary that normally rings all alarm bells for artists because you are not allowed really to put your own take on it. You try to be neutral to everything. That means in editing and sound design in color, especially. So how did you find the fine line to be honest to your artistry, but also to not keep the documentary into areas where it doesn't belong maybe and yeah. in this case where you have a painter who is already so strong with color involved that you can only follow or tell me a little bit about it yeah yeah so it's, it's perfect about it i remember the first documentary i did it was actually for nat geo and i wanted to put some style because i love history channel <laughs> So I wanted to say, okay, let's 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 put some of the style in some way, like look that History Channel was doing with the documentaries that were part fiction and were part documentaries. And I remember that I, I put some like some like stylish and then I sent it to the client and the client said to me, No Diego, please <laughs> look more of what we are doing. <laughs> And that way he, I, I have to like reset everything and like try to do what they wanted in some way. Well, it was not natural. natural. Also, also what, what I was, was at that time doing, doing was, was like, I was like doing, doing something that I wanted, but, but not, not that, that they wanted. wanted. That, that was, was one problem. problem. I wanted, I wanted like to look so like fiction and so on, but they, they don't want it like that. They wanted more natural. natural. So, so when, when you're, you're doing natural, doing natural What, What you, you need, need to take, take care of is that, that okay, do, do normal, normal but, but enjoy, enjoy the depth of, of, the, of, the, of the shooting. Do, do contrast, but, but not just contrast black and white, contrast, contrast of colors. colors. Like, like make that, that image beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful that, that if your eyes, eyes are there, there I'm going, going to look at something like that. that. The skin, the, the highlights, the colors. colors Also, also try to move some, some shapes to create depth, depth. and that, that is the thing. thing. You, you can, can say, okay, do, do, do it normal, normal but, but do it beautiful. beautiful. Do it really beautiful. Very nice. Thank um, you. Um, Gigi is commenting on the chat um, that you should probably do a follow-up video in Spain and uh, Spanish, uh, Diego. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why, Why not? not? <laughs> All right. All right. Um, yeah, by the way, Diego is at the moment in Spain. Um, you are teaching in a university at the moment, right, Diego? I'm, I'm teaching, teaching in a university, university and actually my students here are going, going to grade this project next, next week. week. Yeah. So um, on that note, then, um, while we're wrapping up here, um, um, please feel free to download the project. It is available in the in the YouTube um how do you call it descriptions um there you see the dropbox links download them and then um, play around with it and um when you want um you can submit it to us next week before next week so um those who grade it um you know play something uh, do something nice with the clip and happen to use like our um, red giant products or maxon products um we'll, we'll give you um a limited editions um T-shirts from Max. Hey, hey Max. Yes. The, the students, students of Diego, Diego are they excluded because they have an advantage, advantage to have a great, great teacher? teacher? Oh, of course <laughs> not. Diego, please spread the word. <laughs> they they are they're very welcome to join as well. Okay. Hey, and, so um, that, 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 that is awesome. awesome. They, they will be, be so happy about it. it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. okay. About T-shirts. Do, do you have, have something to show? show? Um, at the moment, I don't have the, the T-shirts yet, but we'll keep it a surprise for next week. But, but some, some, some for next two weeks. 
Oh, you mean oh, that T-shirt? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. Let me let me grab my uh, screen. Uh, Diego, your screen. I'll grab it. Yes. So, speaking of T-shirts, um, if you don't want to, if you don't want to participate in, uh, with a grading, um, how do you call it? Submit your grade uh, for next two weeks. Um, you still can win. Uh, you you still can get uh, T-shirts from um, Maxon Store, and uh, uh, that is the Ask the Trainer T-shirts. Uh, let me show you. Where is that? Uh, can, can we, we put, put an, an image, image from Diego's, Diego's documentary, documentary on the t-shirts? Yeah. <laughs> that would be perfect. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah, that's the, the fault on my side. I mean, that's the, the error <laughs> on my side. Um, <laughs> you can win it. You, you can get a free T-shirt from Ma Maxon Merch Store, and um, I will provide the link in the recording of the video of YouTube. But um, in order to access that store, um, you need a code, and and it seems that I don't know the code yet. But I will provide that. I will follow up follow up with the with the codes, and I'll I'll provide it in the in the comment sections. All right, and. If you would like to uh, watch the recording of these sessions, and if you want to watch another webinars that Maxon um, hosts, feel free to um, follow us, not follow us, visit our website, visit our YouTube channel, and that is that that's a, that's that is a Maxon Training Team. And if you go to playlist, for example, we have a lot of like um, webinars ranging from Cinema 4D, Redshift and um, Red Giant products and um, it ranging from modeling um, and also MoGraph and also um, color grading as well. If you like uh, quick, um, quick tips, like some 20 second tips on our products, there's also like this 20 second tips. And um, yeah, that's all about the YouTube um, page. And if you would like to know what's happening at Maxon and you want to watch, um, you want to follow Maxon, please feel free to go to maxon.net slash events and you'll see that we are in FMX. We are at FMX at the moment. And next, tomorrow actually, Hashi and Seth will be back on um, FreeFX and Chill and um, I really encourage you to visit um, their show as well because they're doing so many cool and fun stuff and at VFX and chill. So um, that's, uh, that's it um, for today. If you want to, um, please, again, um, I'm just repeating myself but at, this, at this point. Um, I, I wish to um, see you again next, week, next two weeks, and that is um, at 19th of May. And please uh, submit your grade um, to us. And that is um you can you can um email us at where where is it let me go to this and please uh feel free to um submit that to maxon color at maxon dot net um yeah and if you have any questions about anything about today's sessions or about uh, workflows and color corrections and color gradings, you can also contact us at maxoncolor at maxon.net. We'll be very happy to hear from you, right? So, um, Diego, thank you very much for today's sessions. I really enjoy it. And um, before I play um, the outro, I would like to replay again the clip. And then after that, I'll close the session so without further ado this is the clips from um what's the title of the documentary diego oh that's, that's a, a good, good question, question. cartagena <laughs> colors, colors of cartagena. cartagena colors of cartagena so i hope to see you in two weeks and please feel free uh, don't forget to um submit your grade um and let's have a talk about it all right until next week
Okay. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you, Dr. Sassi. Thank you, Diego. Thank, Thank you, Max. My name is Alberto Gonzalez. I am a painter, empirical painting. I sell my own painting in San Diego Square always, and I am a professional tour guide. I am from Cartagena. I born here and I live here and I think I, I will die here. I paint Cartagena but no Cartagenians because the governments don't want Cartagenians inside the old city. So I paint, you can see, a street, balconies, everything, but no people. Because like that, I show that Cartagena is beautiful, but Cartagena needs the Cartagenians people too. <music> 25 years ago, I was a street vendor, but I sell only t-shirts. Someday, my friend tell me why I don't sell paintings. And I say, because I have no painting. And he tell me, I give you, and you sell them, and you pay me the, the cost, and you make some. And I say, okay, give me. And he bring me five different paintings about Cartagena. But when I sell those paintings, I give 90% of the sellers to him, and only 10% for me. Every day was the same. Sometimes I think, why I have to sell paintings for him? I can't paint like him. And I sell three paintings, one day, and I go to the supermarket and I buy all the material, brush painting, colors, uh, canvas, and I try to paint. That I go in, in the painting's life 25 years ago. Because never is too late to do everything. You see the three white balconies? are the same like, like the paintings I, I do. Fourteen years ago, my eyes put black, 100% black. I, I've been seven hours blind. Now I just see 2% in my left eyes and 10% in my right eyes, but I can paint and I can sell my paintings. I want to show what I feel when I come to the old city. I feel that I am part of this city and the city is part of me. We are happy people and we show through the color one. The reason that I use a strong color in my painting too because always I am happy. Cartagena is, is a city that everybody come here and enjoy everything because Cartagena is like a mother. Everybody come here and feeling son of Cartagena. If you come to Cartagena, for sure you come back. Lo estoy haciendo. Ah, bueno. Listo. Tus, tus deseos son órdenes. <ríe> ok, chao. chao.